Now, one of Socrates' first teachers, his very first teacher was Anaxagoras, but not too long after he was his teacher, Anaxagoras was charged with impiety because he said the sun was a red-hot glowing stone and the moon was actually made from earth, which are some pretty crazy things to say at the time, especially since it's pretty much true. But because of this, because of his charges, he was forced to flee Athens, and then Socrates got a new teacher. And this new teacher was Archelaus. Archelaus was one of those teachers that liked his students a little too much, and he would often try to have intercourse with his own students. He specifically became very attracted to Socrates and tried to sleep with him multiple times. And of course, at this time within Greece and this time in the world, it was much more common for men to be with other men and women to be with other women. It wasn't even seen as a rebellious thing. It was just a very normal thing at the time. But after this time, Socrates started to think a lot more. He started to begin his journey of becoming the Socrates we know today. And he eventually repeated the saying, know thyself, which actually did not come from him, but it's popular mainly because of him and because of Plato. Because Plato is the only reason we really know about Socrates. He was one of the two people that actually documented the life of Socrates and the events in Socrates' life. Socrates was the type of guy that you would not want to have a debate with, or even just like a basic philosophical discussion with. Because not only was he very intelligent, but he was always trying to poke holes in your argument and find out where you were wrong and exactly how you were wrong. He was just a very fierce opponent to deal with. And at this time, he also didn't have a job. He wasn't working or anything. He never wanted to work. He wanted to live the life of a philosopher at the time. This involved him having tons and tons of time all day to think and to have conversations or debates with other people. So word spread fast about Socrates throughout Athens and very quickly, everyone knew who he was. Now, by the time he was 30, his friend Seraphon asked the oracle at Delphi if there was anyone wiser than Socrates. And the oracle answered, none. There is no one wiser than Socrates. And Socrates thought this was insane. How could he be the wisest man after all? He said, I know nothing except the fact of my own ignorance. So Socrates decided, well, I have to prove the oracle wrong. Even though I believe that the oracle speaks to the gods, I also cannot believe this because I believe I know nothing. So he goes around speaking to the other wise men of Athens, and then he realizes that they're actually not as wise as he. Now, why is the reason for this? It's because he said he knew his own ignorance. And during this time when he was trying to find the wisest men, he would again engage in f philosophical debates to better understand their ideas and better understand his own ideas. And oftentimes he would turn his opponents, these wise men, into laughing stocks. And by doing this, he definitely gained many, many enemies. He found to his dismay, quote, that the men whose reputation for wisdom stood highest were nearly the most lacking in it while others who were looked down as a common people were much more intelligent. So like I said, the only reason Socrates came to the conclusion that the oracle at Delphi was correct in saying that there was no one wiser than him was because he recognized his own ignorance. Now the youth in Athens started to recognize Socrates more and more and follow him more and more because they would watch him have these debates with the elders who were just working at a small little merchant shop and how it would turn into this big debate. And they thought it was very interesting. So they started to follow Socrates. And many of these young men would discard all of their other aspirations to become a philosopher and follow Socrates. And if you don't know what the word philosophy actually technically means, it means the love of wisdom. Among some of these young men were Antisthenes, who was the founder of the Cynic School, Aristippus, who was the founder of the Cyrenaic school, Xenophon, whose writings would influence the Zeno of Scythium, who was the founder of the Stoic school, and most famously Plato, who was the main source of all information we have on Socrates, among many, many other young men. Every major philosophical school mentioned during this time 
were all created by followers of Socrates. 